All right, so I want to just do a quick discussion of um, the geometric distribution. And so the geometric distribution is the distribution of, if, of the number of times it takes to have our first success. So let's say we have a sequence of, so if we let uh, xi be Bernoulli with probability p, then, then, and let t be the value, the first value of i, so xi equals 1. So in other words, so let t be this, or in other words, t is equal to the first success. time of the first success. So in other words, we're flipping a coin that comes up heads with probability p, and we ask how long do I have to wait for the first time I get a head? Well, let's think about that. Let's see. Well, what's the probability that t equals 1? Well, the way that you end up with t equals 1 is you just get a head on the first hit. So the probability that happens is p. What's the probability that t equals 2? Well, I have to fail on the first flip which is Q, and I have to get a success on the second flip. What's the probability that T equals 3? Well, I have to fail on the first two flips and then be successful on the third flip. And in general, the probability that T equals K is equal to Q to the K uh, minus 1 times P. And this random variable, so T is distributed geometric with parameter p. Now, notice a few things are different about this random variable than all the others we've discussed so far. The range, what's the range of t? Well, it's actually equal to 1, 2, 3. So the range is infinite. Infinite. So it takes an infinite number of values. So that's a little different than what we've talked about so far. So we have to think a little bit more about that. Just one word of warning before I get too far away. Sometimes <clears throat> there are two definitions of the geometric distribution. You have to ask which one people are talking about. Sometimes people think about it taking having a different geometric is the one on the integer 0, 1, 2, da, 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 and the probability of that one of t equaling k is just equal to uh, q to the k times p. Okay, that's, it's, it's the exact same um, <clears throat> sorry, q to the k times p, that's right. It's the exact same as this, it's just we've shifted. The only difference here is this one starts at 0 and this one starts at 1. So we've just shifted the k by 1. So just make sure when people talk about the geometric, and sometimes we'll talk about both in the book, just make sure you know which one is. But for the moment, let's just consider this first one. Now, <clears throat> we have an infinite range. So we have to think a little bit about some of the probability that we've done so far, just for a second. So I want to just point out that we can extend a lot of the same ideas that we've had so far. So the first idea is that we can still talk about a partition. So now our state space that t takes values in would be, for, for instance, the, all the integers. And just like before, we can talk about a partition. So now we have a countable. partition is just a collection of sets a, i, j, a, so a whole collection of sets a, i, maybe i equals 1 to infinity now, such that a, i, a, j intersect a, i is equal to the empty set if i is not equal to j, so they're pairwise disjoint, and yet the union of all the a, i is equal to our full space, i equals 1 to infinity. So in this case, for instance, the partition could just be each individual integer, or maybe some subset. And the fact which is important to understand, which, is, which we need to just state, is that we'll still assume that our probability measures are such that the probability of any event, you know, if, if this equals some set b in general, so it's a partition of a set b, the probability of b 
is just equal to the infinite sum, i equals 1 to infinity, of the probabilities of the ai. So if they're disjoint and their, sum, their union is equal to a set b, then the probability of b is this infinite sum. And this is true as long as this is a countable partition, which means that it's in one-to-one -one association with the integer. So there's just a, you can count how many there are. So that's a little bit beyond the scope of this course to worry about uncountable, uncountable versus countable issues. But you know we're going to need this a lot. So just I want to just state it so you're at least aware of the idea. Now let me just make one or two quick comments about the geometric distribution. <clears throat> so, so just. In the same way, we need to, if we want to talk about the expected value of t, well, now we have this uncountable variable. So in general, if we have a variable with an uncount with a countable range, sorry, I meant to say countable range, a countable range, we'll define the expected value uh, of x to be the sum that, uh, so k, let's say k is equal to 0 to infinity, let's say the range of x is some countable set, let's just say 0, 1, 2, all the way out. Well, then it'll be k times the probability that x equals k. And this will say, we'll, we'll define this, define this provided the sum absolute value of x, absolute value of k, excuse me, the probability that x is equal to k So provided this over all x in the range of x. So I actually want to allow this to take many different values. Let me just correct that quickly. So I'm just going to say that x is in the range of x. So of course in the case I wrote up at first that it was countable, 0, 1, 2, 3, just the natural numbers, there's no problem with this. But we're only going to talk about this, and I have to finish the sentence, as long as this is finite. So we're going to define for a, for a random variable that takes a countable number of values, we'll define the expected value to be just what we wrote before, as long as the absolute value of the probabilities is finite. If that's not true, then we're not even going to talk about what we mean by the expected value, because to be honest, it's ill-defined. All right, so an example, um, <clears throat> well, uh, an example of that would be if, you know, if, if we, if the probability of x equaling k was equal to some constant over k squared. Um, and we, here we're going to let k equal be, the, be all the negative and positive integers. So it'll start at dot, 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 minus 2, minus 1, 0. Uh, let's not let, let's, let's uh, just make this like that. Oops, sorry. Let's make it like that. Squared. 0, 1. So now the problem with this, you notice, is that although we could pick a c so that the sum of this is equal to 1, we have a problem. If we multiply, if we calculate the expected value of, of x, that would we would normally think that should be k equal minus infinity up to infinity of k times c over k squared plus 1 where c was chosen so this thing sums to 1. But the problem with this is that this looks a lot, this looks essentially like the sum k equals minus infinity to infinity of 1 over k, which is equal to infinity. And so we're not even going to talk about this. Why? Well, because as long as I sum from side to side, this, these two terms would cancel out one with the other. We would have a positive sign, negative sign. So I could actually make this sum be anything I wanted, but we're not going to go into that. So, but Whenever we have this, we'll assume that we can define the expected value. Now, let's just do one last thing before we end. Let's calculate the expected value of the geometric random variable. So a geometric random variable should be the sum k equals 1 to infinity, k times the probability that x equals k. <clears throat> so before we even did that, and let's see, let's just go ahead and write this up. k, k equals 1 to infinity, and this is q to the k minus 1 times p. So let's go ahead and just call this p times uh, sigma 1, where let's call sigma 1 is just the number 
sum k equals 1 to infinity k times q k minus 1. Alright. <clears throat> so you might have already asked yourself, how do I know that this is a well-defined probability distribution? So one thing you'd want to check is the sum that t equals k, k equals 1 to infinity, should be equal to 1. Well, let's double check that that's true. So in this case, we have this is equal to 1 to infinity. It's p times q to the k minus 1. And let's call this some epsilon 0. And that's just a geometric series. And if you calculate it, that is 1 over 1 minus q, which is the same, of course, as 1 over p. So this expression is p times 1 over p, which is just 1. So that works, that's good. But now how are we going to go ahead and calculate this one? Well, to do that, we'll just use a little trick. So let me go ahead and write the trick up here. So what we're going to do is we'll take this definition of E1. We want to calculate what E1 is equal to. So let's notice that E1, so sigma 1, I should have said, excuse me, is 1 plus 2q, I'm just writing out this definition, plus 3q squared plus 4q cubed and so on. And now let's multiply q times e1. If I multiply q times e1, what do I get? I get a q times that, which is a q. Then I get a 2q squared plus a 3q cubed, and so on. So I've just taken this expression, multiplied by q, and then written like powers. So now let's subtract this from this. So that's 1 minus q times e1. What is that going to be equal to? Well, I'm going to get a 1 from here, nothing. Here I have a 2q minus 1q, which is q. Here I have a 3q squared minus 2q squared, which is q squared. Here I have a 4q cubed minus 3q cubed, which is just q cubed. And I claim that if you check, you'll see that it just keeps going that same way. And what is that? Well, that's exactly what the sum was down here. That's just e0, which we know is 1 over... 1 minus q. So if we solve then for e1, that implies that sigma 1, sorry, is 1 over 1 minus q squared. And last, lastly, if we go back to our original thing where we were calculating the expected value of t, we found that was p times e1, which is 1 minus q squared. But 1 minus q squared is p, so that's p over p squared, and that's just 1 over p. Which actually makes perfect sense, because if you think about it, the chance of success was p, and so about how many, how many times are you going to have to try this experiment to have a good chance of getting a success? Well, if the chance is p, and they're all independent, then if I do 1 over p of them, times the chance of success, which is p, I should have an expected value of 1. So the expected amount of time I have to wait for my first success should look something like 1 over p. All right, great.